Okay, so we have been talking about conceptual dependency theory and which tries to represent everyday actions in terms of a small set of predicates. We will look at those actions in a short while, but before that let us look at how Margi, one of the earliest programs that they wrote could do inferences with that. And uh, what I will show you is as reported by in their literature, what is the inferences that the program actually makes and you can try and imagine as to what kind of rules they must have put in. This whole thing was rule based essentially. So, here is an example, John hit Mary, John told Mary that Bill wants a book. Margie produced these different outputs. For example, a book about what? Mary knows that Bill wants a book. Bill wants to come to have a book. Bill wants someone to cease to have a book. Bill wants to read a book. Hmm? You can imagine that, for example, when you are talking about giving a book from person A to person B, then you can make inferences that uh, now person B has the book, person A does not have the book, person B wanted the book, maybe person B will read the book and things like that essentially. So, you can put in knowledge about this kind and then of course, make these inferences. Here is another example, John gave Mary a beating with a stick. So, you can infer a stick touched Mary, we will see. Uh, later when we talk about this somebody hitting somebody with a stick that basically there is a physical contact between the stick and the person who is being hit with a stick. So, that is why this Margie could infer that a stick touched Mary. Mary became hurt that is you know all these are plausible inferences, they are not necessarily deductive. John wanted Mary to get hurt, um, why was John angry? So, all this is as you can see a little bit of ad hoc kind of inferences have been made. This whole idea about uh, conceptual dependency, scripts and so on was derived from folk psychology. So, uh, basically how do people think about such things essentially and uh, the inferences that were put in were also in that sense somewhat random, but they were produced by the program. So, John gave Mary an aspirin, John believes that Mary wants an aspirin, Mary is sick, Mary wants to feel better, Mary will ingest the aspirin, all reasonable inferences, but you have to have the background knowledge about the world to be able to make them. So, you should know what is an aspirin to start with. John is going to go to the store, John wants to be at the store. A little obvious, but it is an inference that you can make. What does John want to buy? Also a plausible inference or a question. John will trade money to the store for something. So, for example, buying in conceptual dependency will be broken down into actions where you give money to somebody and somebody gives you something. This is a different mode, which is a paraphrase mode. It is not making inferences, it is just saying the same thing in again. It demonstrates the fact that you can translate it into CD and then translate it out of CD. There were some uh, examples where they were there in Spanish, but I seem to have lost them essentially. John advised Mary to drink the wine. John told Mary that drinking the wine would benefit her. That comes from the, as we will see later the meaning of the word advice, how is advice represented in conceptual dependency. John killed Mary by choking Mary. So, maybe that is the meaning of strangled. In the dictionary in which conceptual dependency structures are stored and there is some detail which you can infer if you know what choking means, what strangling means.
Reading the book reminded Rita to loan the book to Bill. Rita remembered to give the book to Bill and she expects him to return it to her because someone read the book. So, it is a bit as you can see incoherent, uh, but that is it should be and and she expects him to return the book because that is the meaning of the word uh, of a loan essentially. The fact that reading the book reminded Rita has been translated someone read the book. Though we as humans would infer that uh, Rita was reading the book. As I said, these are somewhat ad hoc kind of inferences, just designed to illustrate that all this can be done. John prevented Bill from giving a banana to Mary by selling a banana to Rita. Although presumably there is only one banana which was around, Bill was unable to give a banana to Mary because Rita traded John some money for a banana. As you can see, the word traded has come in again and uh, it is related to selling and so on. What are the different kind of inferences that Margie could make? One is specification inferences. John picked up a log, he hit Bill. So, the inference that you are making is he hit Bill with the log. John and Bill were alone on a desert island, Bill was tapped on the soldier, John tapped Bill. Causative inferences, John hit Mary with a log. John was probably mad at her. Resultative inferences, Mary gave John a car, John has a car. Motivational inferences, John hit Mary, John probably wanted Mary to be hurt. All this comes from the way we represent the meaning of words like hit and so on essentially. Pete went to Europe, where did he get the money from? Function inferences, John wants the book, John probably wants to read it. Enablement prediction inferences, Dick looked in his cookbook to find out how to make a roux. So, Dick will now begin to make a roux. Missing enablement inferences. Mary could not see the horses finish, she cursed the man in front of her, infer that the man blocked her vision. Intervention inferences. The baby ran into the street, Mary ran after him, Mary wants to prevent the baby from getting hurt. You can see that this is, you can answer, makes, generate some answers only if you have some certain amount of world knowledge about everyday actions, which is what CD theory is about, uh, to understand what is really happening there. John wanted some nails, he went to the hardware store. Knowledge propagation. Pete told Bill that Mary hit John with a bat. Bill knew that John had been hurt. Normative inferences. Does Pete have a gallbladder? It is highly likely. So, that is a normal thing to happen. John saw Mary at the beach Tuesday morning. Why was not she at work? State during Duration inferences. John handed a book to Mary yesterday. Is Mary still holding it? Probably not. Feature inferences. Andy's diaper is wet. Andy is probably a baby. Situation inferences. Mary is going to a masquerade. She will probably wear a costume. Utterance intent inferences. Mary could not jump the fence. Why did she want to? What are the kind of heuristics that were there into their system? 
for making these inferences. By heuristics, you mean rules. John ruled as he viewed the banana he ate. Fill the banana as the conceptual object of eating. Pete and Bill were alone on a desert island. Someone tapped Bill on the shoulder. We have seen this example. Fill in Pete as a conceptual actor of the move which underlies tap. Mary picked up the rock. So, this whole idea is about expectations that we will see that empty slots in, in representations are expected to be filled. So, if there is an empty slot for an actor and you basically pick one of the actors that you know about. Mary picked up the rock, she hit John, predict that it was the rock, it was the rock that was in con the object of Mary's propelling act. So, propel we will see is a act. John was driving his car, he hit Mary, predict that the car is the object of the propel, that the car was moving and the car hit Mary. John bought a hammer, by is underlined by a dual a trans, we will see A trans is abstract transfer, which means transfer of possession act. Who is the other actor? He bought a hammer, but who did he buy it from? You can expect that empty slot to be filled, and these kind of rules will say look for that pillar for that slot. John was asleep. What is the location of this common state likely to be in the absence of? other explicit information. Hopefully, not a class. Mary went to work. What is the time of this common action likely to be? John went to Paris. Predict that the likely instrument was fly. So, this is a sentence we had seen earlier. John hit his little dog. And supposing we wanted to say yesterday John hit his little dog, then we have said that conceptualizations can have a time associated with that and we can add yesterday here. We also said that you should not use the word yesterday there, that you must make it explicit and so on. But that is the idea of adding more information to the same conceptualization. Now, you will remember that uh, uh, we have already spoken about such things, uh, reification and the process of creating abstract entities in, in this case that was an event and incidentally this was also an hitting event that we had talked about earlier in which Divya had uh, hit Atul and we had broken it down in this fashion uh, which you will recognize is similar to what conceptual dependency is also doing that we are having binary relations between elements uh, which are depicted in the C diagrams by graphical, but you could also write them as uh, in a logical structure, perhaps a little bit like this or something like that. So, if you wanted to represent this same conceptualization in the more modern like style that we adopted for uh, triple. Uh, triples and um, binary um, predicate sentences, then it would look something like this, that there was an event, the agent of the event was John, the object of the event was a dog, uh, the owner of the dog was John, the act, act was hit and the date was June 12. I should have added an attribute here, little. So, you see this work was done in the 70s and knowledge graphs are being adopted now and there is a lot of convergence happening here. As I said earlier, the only thing that distinguishes conceptual dependency theory is a choice of predicates. The representations are similar to what we would do that in something like RDF or something now. So, we will come back and look at CD theory a little bit in more detail in the next video.